This uh, all started with me collecting Mickey Mouse about 30 years ago. I started collecting um, all the things Mickey Mouse that I could find and then it's uh, evolved itself into this large Mickey Mouse collection. Sometimes I think, oh my God, I can't believe I've, how'd I get all this stuff? You know, I start piecing, oh, I, I remember when I got that, I remember, oh, I remember that, and it brings back, you know, some pretty cool memories. At a garage sale when I was around 22 years old, I picked up a, an older Mickey Mouse and looked at it. That Mickey Mouse is the Mickey Mouse that started it off for me. So this is the original Mickey. So back in the, when I was in my 20s, this is the Mickey Mouse I picked up and kind of the light bulb went on. It brought back those good memories that children think about, you know, when good things happen in life. And that started this whole train rolling of me collecting Mickey Mouses. It brought back those memories, which uh, were uh, really important to me because uh, um, I didn't have a lot of them. I you know, grew up in foster homes and group homes as a kid. In the group home, that I, the last one that I was in, uh, my foster mother, we were talking about something that was emotional and I, I wasn't crying. And at that point, I never cried. And she said it was okay. And, uh, and she, uh, I cried for probably two or three days. But, and now, as you can see, I, I, anything that's emotional, I let myself cry because I think it's important. And up until that point, I never did. So up until I was 13, I probably never cried. Even though things were bad or sad or upsetting, I'd never ever let myself do that because I was told, you know, men or boys, they don't cry. Being here is almost religious to me, I think, in some context or way. It's, it makes me feel like I just feel so happy. I feel like a little kid. I'm 52 years old, and I'll tell you, I feel, I feel like I'm 20 or, or younger. I just I got this smile on my face I can't get rid of. I just think today's going to be amazing. Your idol in life, you, you want to go and meet that person or, or be where that thing started in life, and Mickey Mouse started here in California, and so I'm here. I'm here where Mickey Mouse started, and, this is a, a complete part of my life, I guess. Share it with my son. Just share, share this amazing day with him. That's what I want out of it. Mickey's car. This is too cool. <laughs> I have a little one at home about this big. Mickey's piano. He doesn't have DVDs. He's got he's got reels. Would you like to come in and meet Mickey Mouse? I do very much. So that's the whole reason I'm here. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Oh, I've been waiting to come back to see you. Oh my God. I probably have four or 5,000 Mickey Mouse sites. So I've been collecting you for a very long time. Get emotional, you know. Yeah. And it's just a little cartoon character, but it still affects me emotionally and uh, makes me, uh, you know, feel really good inside. Life's kind of coming full circle, you know. You, 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 it's always that way when you meet your idol. I mean, Mickey Mouse is my idol, and so that's that cool thing. You can be the movie star or film star or entertainment business. To me, Mickey's that person or that character. And, that's, uh, and I got to do that. I got to do it on a grand scale. These are Jeff Shelley drawings that he did for me uh, at a fan expo. Um, this is uh, Fantasia, so this is a character. It actually is right off of my arm. So the first time I met Jeff Shelley at Fan Expo in 2011, this is the drawing that he did for me. There's a video out of it. It shows, you know, I'm just in awe. I think that that started the kinship between me and Jeff Shelley, and um, that's continued on over the years, which has been really, really cool. 
How are you doing? How buddy? are you? Oh my god. You can see some of my collection of Mickey stuff. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, I have that one. I have that one. Have one those. I have this one. I'm pretty sure I have that one, that one, one like that one. Come over here, I'll draw you some stuff real quick. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm holding the real Oscar Cody. <laughs> this feels like uh, I'm holding history in my hands. This is, uh, this is a very, very cool, cool thing. I just collected it because it, uh, it made me feel good. And so, uh, but to come and see where it all started is very uh, emotional and overwhelming. <laughs> So this is Floyd Gofferson's actual desk that he inked all the old comic strips on. That drawing board has more Mickey Mouse oh. DNA on it than any <laughs> other object uh, so in cool. the world. This is dark. Come on over here, Come on. Small. You need a picture. Okay, you guys. Yep. <laughs> this is little, all right. Then you're in. Oh, hey, man. Oh, yeah, boy, here he comes. Come on. <laughs> okay, so you want to pick that little mini up. Because she's only two years old when she was drawn and inked. There you go. That's that. That's the real deal right that's there. The real deal. <laughs> I'm in like, I'm in a, a museum. This is unbelievable. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm in awe. This is the original art. I have lots of friends in the company that, that see me handling these without white gloves, gloves. but you, I want you to handle it without white gloves too. Being in that room, I mean, when you look at it through the glass, it was one thing, but to actually go in there and touch things is... I didn't even get to go in there. <laughs> you can't put into words how I feel about what happened to me. It's made this room even more meaningful to me. That's when it started for me.